Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this first code blog, we're going to be diving in to an interesting little browser quirk that I found. Now, you'll be seeing I'm using Safari, but honestly, I think Safari's got a really nice uh, timeline view, which is something that we're going to be using. And honestly, it's a little bit more visual and looks a little bit nicer on camera. But this browser issue will persist on any browser that you use. So Safari, Firefox, Chrome, not going to matter. So what are we talking about here? Well, through the course of building out this page, which by no means looks like it's supposed to, okay, one of the things that's going to remain common over this series is that the site is going to evolve in both design as well as execution of the design itself. So this is not only an early design, but also a very early execution. Nothing is quite looking right, right? So let's talk about what we're talking about today. And what we're talking about today is this latency that comes about when using this filter blur in CSS. Now, filter blur in CSS is a very supported CSS feature at this point. However, you'll see that when I select a checkbox here, there's an inherent bit of lag. Now, there's usually a lot more lag than this because I've limited the amount of videos that we're loading or the amount of tutorial series that we're loading here to 50 but I would prefer to have all of them loaded at once. In fact, there's not a whole lot stopping me from loading them all at once, except for this issue. Now, if I tell it to load 200, you're gonna notice this latency gets even more intense and it might even cause my computer to freak out. Um, I click it, one, click it, one, two, it's like almost two seconds. So what's going on here? How did I fix the problem and how did I diagnose this? What did I do first? Well, the big concern was that this might have been some sort of a database issue or a backend issue, which it's not because we're not doing any data fetching. So I know that this is entirely a UI issue. Now, the UI issues are when you have a UI issue, sometimes it's nice to dive into what's called the timeline view. So let's say I wanted to debug this. If we head into the timeline view, now this view also exists in Firefox and Chrome and is great in both of those. I just kind of like the way it looks on Safari. Um, so if I head in here and I click the record button and then I start to do the things that I was doing, such as clicking, waiting for the lag, the inevitable lag, click again, lag. Okay. That's enough. I can click stop, stop. Okay. Now, if we take a look at what's going on here, we have our CPU load, which you can see every time I click really shoots up. Not only that, um, there's not a ton of JavaScript going on, right? This JavaScript event, sure. That's something, but it's, it's not a ton of ton of work here. That's not even happening on click because what you can see is click event dispatched, the event dispatched, and then we have this big green line. Now this big green line is indicative of a long paint time. Now paint is what happens when the browser is choosing to how to display it based on its CSS. And you can see that we have the composite, composite and paint tasks are both taking an extreme amount of time. Oftentimes we're getting into full on second territory, one second to do its paint. And that's a lot. That's a whole lot of time to worry about painting. Um, and it, you can see it happens it distinctly right after we click and then it filters again. And then again, we click long paint time. So this led me down to the rabbit hole of what could be causing these a long paint time, right? What's causing this to be so not great for us? Well, in comes the filter line right here. It's how we're doing the background blur on these cards, which I love the background blur. It's a nice little design feature. It's a nice little design touch. It kind of makes the text a little bit easier to read on some of these granted the text giant um, because my CSS isn't quite there. So when you see something like this, it's important to kind of dive in what's going on on this page. Now we're not doing too much. These cards are really pretty easy. But I noticed one thing really quickly is that this is a background div that is just setting a background image URL. And if I comment this out, the paint issue goes away. So it's really easy for me to see that this background class div is the problem. Well, what exactly is the problem? Once you dial it down, you can look at this. We have background size, cover, position, right? What is funky going on here? In fact, the only thing at all that is getting intense is this filter blur, which if we remove, we can head in here. Okay, let's actually stop this. Let's trash it. Let's click record. We can do our filter. And this time it's instant, right? Check that out. 
That's a big difference. And in fact, if we compare that to what we were looking at before, we click and there's a milliseconds of paint time, not half, half well, two, a whole second, right? So you can see instantly just by using this timeline view that we found the problem. That's the problem. You can see now when I scroll, all of these are loaded instantly. I don't have to wait for that lag to happen. When you click, there's no UI lag, even though I'm loading 200 rather than 50, right? The performance is better with 200 than it is with 50 just because I got rid of the blur. So if we want that UI element of the blur back in here, what do we do? And this is where it gets fun because we can get that UI element back in here using Cloudinary. Now, this is not an ad for Cloudinary. We've been using them for a very long time. They're used on this site. They're used on the current version of the site. And typically what we've been doing is just loading up these images via Cloudinary path. And I've added this transform in here. And so what we can do now is use Cloudinary's transform to e-blur the image ahead of time that it's with format auto. And what you're going to see is that we can maintain this blurred effect where these images actually are blurred, but we don't lose out on uh, any of our performance, which is the major concern, especially when dealing with a UI that people are going to be clicking a lot, right? I click, I want to see all the React and Svelte tutorials by Scott Talensky. When I click these things, I want them to appear instantly. And that's what I want, right, as a user. And so now what we've essentially done, and you can see with some weird clipping issues now, but one thing that we've done essentially here is we've taken some load off of the browser. What is some processing that the browser is doing? That is processing that filter on all 200 of these cards. And we're moving that filter to happen in a compile step that's being done ahead of time in Cloudinary. Not only that, once those images have been cached, which, um, sorry, let me go back here. Now that those images have been cached, if we look at our network tab and click a refresh on this page, we're loading 200 tutorial courses, 200 courses. And you can see that the only thing on the second load of this page that's being loaded is a five, 845 byte image. Everything else is being cached in memory. The CPU is chill and happy. Everything works so much better. So this is something that you need to be aware about if you're using CSS filter. Does this mean you shouldn't ever use CSS filter? No, but it does mean that you need to be cognizant of what filter is doing. And many times I, you know, I, I think that it stinks that this feature exists in the browser, but we can't use it. I'm on a MacBook Pro 16 inch loaded up with 10,000 gigabytes of RAM and it cannot handle CSS filter on 50 cards, let alone 200. So it's important to know that when you're dealing with things like CSS filter, maybe it's only to be used on one element or two elements on a page at most. Uh, but if you're having some page lag issues, some UI lag issues, then you'll want to head into that timeline view and start really tweaking with maybe your CSS and seeing if the paint is a problem due to some really intense CSS based feature. So small little tidbit, something I picked up along the course of building this site. I thought it might be interesting for you to know as well. So thanks so much for watching. And next week, I'm going to be showing you how to build something on this new site that is a really neat technique. I'm going to be showing you how you can get a gradient outlined text. This is a gradient outlined text. I promise you, if you Google how to do a gradient outlined text on the internet, you're not going to find a good answer for this. So that's right. I'm going to be showing you exactly how we did it using really awesome modern CSS features. And you're going to be shocked at just how easy it is. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.